is there any substance? Yeah. Do you actually have the knowledge to back it up? Yeah. I love that. I love that. One thing that I would go back to, if you don't mind talking about, but I do feel it might be able to help people is you touched on it just briefly regarding, um, obviously you got stung by a, a dodgy sort of deal sourcer. Is there anything for, for some newbies that are sort of cash rich that just think, you know what, I don't have the time and I don't necessarily want to learn the process inside out. I just want to get my money, which I have, and I just want to buy a deal off a deal sourcer. Yeah. Is there any sort of due diligence that they could do um, beforehand on the sourcer um, as well as little bits that they should know about how to analyze and assess a deal and just to make sure that's right? Let's break it up. So in terms of a deal sourcer, um, first and foremost, you'd probably want to look into social media and see what they're like as a person, what sort of how they're communicating with people. If there have been any bad publicity, looking a bit further into that and seeing whether or not it's been kind of um, confirmed in some some form of way. Mm. You want to go as maybe onto company's house to see if there's anything anything suspicious there. Maybe it doesn't matter if somebody set up a company three months ago or six months ago. The main thing is is that if they've got any other re related companies which have had bad issues, you may want to ask them to see about what type of, what do they focus on? Because everybody will focus on different things. So if somebody asked me about Newcastle um, buy-to-let properties, mm. well, you know, I, I can't help really with that. That's not what we focus on. So everybody will have a kind of a specialization. So you should find out what their sweet spot is. Um, probably I'd ask them to um, demonstrate some sort of cr credibility somehow, some previous projects they've done, some happy investors and having a chat with them, um, and probably a couple of other things, but essentially getting a flavor of from yeah. a, a legal, organizational, um, financial perspective, whether or not this person is somebody I could work with. To kind of separate, if you like, the, the people that are just sort of putting a front on and, and don't actually have what you would classify as a proper business um, versus mm -hmm. those that are actually treating it as a job, have the yeah. people that they that they can sort of like fall back on to, to sort of talk to and trust and say, well, I actually have brought a deal from this person and, and have that sort of confidence to move forward. Yeah, and, and to be honest, it's not hard to do that due diligence. You can just put out there, you know, has anybody met this yeah. guy before? Has anybody had any bad dealings? And you'll see people tagging each other going, yeah. you know, <laughs> Do you want to tell your story? <laughs> it, <laughs> you want, and the thing is, it, like you said before, it's really hard to to build a reputation, but you can smash it to pieces in, second. in seconds. And 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 for me, I, I worked in Russia for fifteen years, and I could have quite easily have been bribed, taken loads of different money from people and stuff. And for me, it was all about principles. If I do that once, or if I do that twice, my reputation is ruined. I'm yeah. nobody here anymore. I'm not unique. Yeah. And. That's one of the USPs, which I think we have a bespoke, is that that will never be broken because of who we are. Yeah. And the people we bring into the business, we make bloody sure that they have exactly <laughs> those same principles because otherwise it's going to be ruined. Yeah. yeah. What about in terms of the basics that a, a newbie should know if they were going to purchase the deal from the numbers and analytical side? Um, because you can trust the deal source up to a certain point, but mm. there's still certain parts that you would still need to know, maybe how to use a rent to rent uh, calculator at least, or yeah. understand maybe like bills. Is there any sort of like key fundamentals that you'd say at least learn this or at least know this, um, as well as doing your due diligence before you take a deal on, or would you just put it into the hands of sort of a deal sourcer? Obviously, you shouldn't put the hands of everything into you know companies or deal mm. sources, but you need to have a balanced opinion. So. If you've got friends that have done deals before and the deal sourcer shows you something, you'd show it to them and say, does this look right? Yeah. You know, you, know, you would speak to management companies. So if they're introducing you to management companies who are going to be looking after it for you, if you're not managing yourself, you'd ask them, does this look like a deal? Would you be happy to manage it? And not, don't just speak to one person. Speak to two, three, four people and get a flavor of whether or not that really does stack up. Because if you don't know the numbers or if you don't understand the business model, it is a risk because I don't know Bitcoin, for example. Yeah. If I gave you some money and you were a Bitcoin expert, I have to trust you 100%. Yeah. So you need to understand sort of some key fundamentals of the different strategies of what should work and what shouldn't. So take, for example, service accommodation. There's a general rule of thumb that 50% occupancy is the break-even point. Mm. You should be managed. And if it doesn't really fit that or it's not close to that, then you shouldn't really take it on. Yeah. That's the general rule of thumb. So if the spreadsheets show that it's 50 percent plus then it's something you should think about considering then you can go into the details of is the rent high 
does the management cost look silly Absolutely. or are the bills sort of inflated or you know have you done all of the legal due diligence on the compliance side so I, I, it's difficult obviously on a podcast probably to yeah. to drill down without seeing a spreadsheet in front of you but um because i'm an excel kind of <laughs> but um but i'd say yeah i i definitely would if you don't understand it then just ask somebody that, that does yeah. and somebody that's not l linked to the deal yeah and then you'll get a kind of a more independent view of you know is this right or not yeah that's uh, that's absolutely spot on i mean to be honest with you when you when you're first starting out you probably don't have an idea of how to work out the rents in a certain area that the nightly rates um how to work out the bills and and linen and, and everything that comes with an sa or a hmo um but if you build enough of a circle around you that you can share that that deal with someone to to sort of get a second opinion if you like then that definitely is a plus point um let's just one one point one more point i just wanted to make was that look at four or five deals because the more deals you start looking at the yeah. more clear it will become the, what the numbers should be yeah. Because when you look at one individual deal, it could look great, but then you look at five other deals and they may not look as good. So you need to look at kind of a few deals before you get a feeling of that. Sorry for interrupting you, by the way. No, no, <laughs> dude, it's, it's a podcast, man. <laughs>